Good morning. Yesterday afternoon, we had a field trip to the spot we want to do hiking, mindful uh, meditation with the sunrise. And then we tour all our land to make a bird house, bird sanctuary. Uh, Dirk is coordinating uh, nature and environment circle, and Ellen will uh, build a beautiful uh, bird house and our meditation spot, and Anna will take a photo. <laughs> so this morning, uh, Anna sent me beautiful 14 photos. Those are in our uh, One Dharma Center Facebook now. So you will see this beautiful uh, 420 acres of land, but unless uh, you were with us yesterday, this description is just minor. You cannot get real experience those field trip. So this is my today's dar- Dharma to- topic of my Dharma talk. Iran Sang Bao. And the first sentence is Iran is the realm of Samadhi, Samadhi beyond all words and speech. I will talk about the Iran at the last of a Iran Sang study. But Iran, Iran Sang, the symbol of here is circle, Iran Sang is the realm of a Samadhi beyond all words and speech. You cannot talk about the Samadhi. So this morning I have a daunting task to talk about the realm of Samadhi, which is beyond our words and speech. So I must stop now and ask you to experience it, because we cannot talk about it with words or speech. My personal daily practice, I made a vow to recite 50 times of Iran Sang Bao a day. So how many times do you recite Irwan Sang Bao? Anyone here do it every day? Great. So at least once a day or twice a day? How often? How many times? Uh Aha. Oh, yes. (laughs) Yes. So at least the Rafe does this review of Iran Sang and chanting of Iran Sang every day. At least all of us here do it uh, once a week. Think about it. 99% of the human population out of 70 billion, they don't do it. But you are very lucky ones here. <laughs> At least to do it once a week. If you come Tuesday and Saturday, at least you do it twice. Oh, Tuesday you don't do it, so just once a, once a week. Why do I want to recite the Iran Sang Vow 50 times a day? Because Iran Sang Vow inspired me. A vision for an emerging new civilization. Some of us, two weeks ago, had a meeting in Manhattan, one Buddhism UN office, and uh, had a field tour again, field trip to UN. At the entrance of a visitor center, there is a beautiful glove. It's a symbol, it's a you know, donation, gift from Turkey to United Nations, is that we are living in a broken world. So out of a broken world, the inside of this broken world, a small, beautiful new world emerging. So we are doing that here. Whether you are aware of it or not, whether you are conscious of it or not, you are participating in this emerging new spiritual civilization by coming here together, practice together. If you want to understand a little more about this emerging new civilization, Don't skip Saturdays. I'm going to talk about its content every Saturday. 
I will talk about this, this new civilizations of uh, uh, vision. Who? Who? Gonna do it, and how we gonna do it, and where we gonna do it, and why we are doing it. All those things I will share every Saturday Dharma talk. The level of understanding the vow, the the Iranian vow, is that deeply related with the, your life, how you live your life. If you understand Iranian vow, you learn how to live well. You learn how to live better. You learn how to live your life each day, make it the most beautiful and the most meaningful. This Iran Sang Bao will impact our personal relationship as well as our social and professional relationship by learning this Iran Sang Bao, by having this kind of insight and wisdom. And this can change our future reality. So, if you understand it clearly, you will live your life differently. When you understand Iran Sang Vow, you have now perspective in your life, perspective on, on the world and human affairs. So, I began my first Dharma talk here. The purpose of life and purpose of this one Dharma Center, and second week I talked about the Irvan Sang Vow, beginning the second paragraph of the last sentence about understanding changing reality. I called it impermanence. How to practice impermanence? How to change this constant changing reality in our daily life? And last week, I talked about uh, the changing reality. There is something constantly changing, but it is not random. That it has some principle. It's not accidental. Whatever happening in our world, whatever happening in our life, it has some meaning and reason and lesson to learn. So that I talked about uh, as uh, what goes around comes around. So if you missed one, you can listen to those in our website. So today, my focus is uh, this uh, samadhi, realm of samadhi beyond all words and, and speech. But before that, let's, let me talk a little about the vow. We call it Iransang vow. What is the role of a vow in your life? The vow means in Buddhism is like a big wish, not small wish. Oh, I want to have a nice car. That was a small wish. The big wish is I want to enlighten. Big wish is I want to experience nirvana. I want to understand samadhi. I want to experience samadhi. That is a big wish. So you have a big wish and a big dream, a great dream. That in Buddhist. Uh, tradition, we call it vow. We make a vow. When he become a minister, we made ordination vow. And bodhisattvas were entering the bodhisattva path. They are making bodhisattva vow of four great vows. So vow is critical because you have a wish, you have a dream, you have a hope, and you have a purpose now. People without dream, without hope without that kind of purpose. They just don't merely exist. But we are here because we have a purpose. Because we want to know why we are here. We want to know who we are. That's why we come to one Dharma Center to study and to learn and to understand our mind, body, and spirit. So Iran Sang Bao provides that reason, reason for, both, for the purposeful life and hope and big dream. Without hope, think about the life without hope. Terrible things happening because they don't have hope. 
If they don't have a purpose, they're just wasting their time daily. So why do we make an Iran-san vow? Is that because while we chant Iran-san, we make a vow to live well today. Just to focus on one thing at a time, live well today. When you meditate, just to focus on your one breath at a time. So this is a vow. We are making this vow to make a meaningful life here on earth and to make a progress in all aspects of our life. And we can improve and cultivate the best quality of our being on earth so we can liberate ourselves. We can learn how to be enlightened. So we learn how to keep our mind and body just like Iransa. So Iransa Bao teaches us that how to live our life in a meaningful way. So the key is practice. Key is practice. Understanding is not enough. Practice makes everything perfect. So Iran Sang summarized all Buddhist teachings or Buddhist practice and Buddhist principles. But this is so difficult. That's why Sotesan, out of his compassion, warning you that this is a realm of samadhi. Don't try to understand by speech and by words. When you look at the real moon up there, if children do not know how to find the moon in the sky, we pointing the moon with the fingers. So when we put the finger pointing, you have to see the real moon in the sky. In Buddhist literature, we talked about the moon a lot. Moon is a symbol of your Buddha nature. Moon is a symbol of fundamental Buddhist principle. And the moon is a circle, it's a little sun. So when you point the real moon in the sky, don't look at the, my finger. Most people make a mistake just pointing, looking at the finger pointing. They stop here. They don't see go beyond finger pointing to see the real moon. So all the teachers here, all the ministers, all the teachings are finger pointing. You have to go beyond and see and experience the real samadhi. So samadhi means, in Sanskrit word, language, meaning a state of consciousness that lies beyond waking, dreaming, deep sleep, in which mental activity ceases. So samadhi means there is no mental activity. How can you get there? How can you experience samadhi, which is beyond waking, sleeping, dreaming, and all mental activity ceases? Through meditation. When we meditate, if you meditate well, you enter the samadhi. So in practice, samadhi is the highest degree of one-pointed mind on a single object, which means when you meditate, nothing else but focusing your mind on your lower center, we call it tanjin, and resting your mind there. So one-pointed awareness and focus on your center, we call it spiritual center, that center is a shelter for your spirituality. So in one Buddhist practice, chanting and Danjenju meditation, sitting meditation, is to cultivate this samadhi. So during the meditation, if you just uh, taste a second of this samadhi, that makes you really happy. Think about it. Today, human beings have uh, 70,000 thoughts a day. You are coming down all those thoughts and coming down and come down and come down 
to the samadhi. So when you practice this uh, sitting meditation, you begin to experience this uh, samadhi. Different way of saying the samadhi is the highest level of a meditative concentration. Uh, I hope you had a chance to read the New York Times article about the power of concentration. If you didn't, in the online on uh, New York Times, uh, 15th of December, editorial page very well described how much concentration is powerful and important in human life, especially today. So when you are not happy, this is the time to really meditate. When you meditate, when you're calming down your mind, you experience a real joy, a real happiness. Have you ever experienced that in your meditation? When you're calming your mind, when you enter this samadhi, finally you are able to concentrate 100% on your breathing, 100% on your inner center we call tanjun. If you do that, that is the real happiness. That is a real lasting happiness. There is no comparison with any sensory pleasure if you experience this uh, samadhi concentration. This samadhi concentration happiness is much greater than any sense of pleasure. When the mind begins to settle down on our tanjan, in our inner center, when we are able to let go of all the distractions, all the disturbance, just the finally setting in, just the one point in it, in your lower center, then you will, you will experience samadhi. So samadhi is not to talk about things. If you want to experience it, just practice with me, sitting with me regularly, and chant Irmazang vow every day. That's why I want to begin my life here at one Dharma Center with a strong meditation practice, with a deep spirituality. So I created a one-month retreat here. I want to invite everybody to join in uh, because when you have this strong spiritual foundation and st strong deep experience of samadhi through your meditation and mindfulness, rest of the year will be beautiful. So teaching Irunsa, teaching this realm of samadhi beyond all words and speech is like teaching a white color to a blind man. So you describe white color to a blind man and he, since he couldn't see white color, um, he didn't get it. He couldn't get it. So you give uh, snow to this blind man. So he touched, touched and felt the snow. Oh, white color is, is it cold. Is it white color is cold? Oh, no, 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 it's not, not cold. So we give, uh, we give uh, salt to blind man, so he tasted. Since he couldn't see it, he tasted. Oh, it's a salty. White color is a salty. Is it salty? When you see white color, is it salty? No, it's not salty. So we gave a uh, blind man sugar. It's a white sugar. So he touched it and tasted. Oh, this is sweet. White color is sweet. Is it sweet? This much is difficult to teach Irwansa is a realm of samadhi beyond all words and speech. If you are not ready, I can wait. I can wait, not teaching. I can just give you stories and all the different stories until you are ready. I feel you are ready. That's why I began teaching Iransa. 
When student s ready, teacher appears. If you're not ready, teacher doesn't appear. The best way to understand real meaning of this sentence, the beginning of Irwan Sangbao, Irwan is the realm of Samadhi, is through practice of meditation, through your own experience. This is an experiential stage, not a way to describe at all. So you begin where you are. So you can meditate as much as possible because meditation is the best technique available to us to understand the fundamental teachings of one Buddhism. And this is a, the, the meditation is the technique to change our negative energy into positive energy. So when we study this uh, samadhi, when we begin to meditate, in the beginning, it must be struggling. We will go through a lot of challenges and struggles. When I first entered a monastery, one Buddhism, I didn't know how to meditate. I didn't have any experience even living a day in local temple at all. I was just inspired by reading scripture. Oh, this is uh, something I had to struggle a lot because at that time there was uh, no instruction how to meditate. Because I was a public school teacher and I had a college degree, so they put me a sophomore. So they, everyone else must be learning when they began, right, began the, the monastic life. So I skipped the one year. So nobody teach him how to meditate. When I, when I ask, you know, nobody really give me clear instruction. So four o'clock in the morning, in the monastery, we ring the bell three, 33 times. We will do it here. The last day of 2012, we will ring the bell. Actually, first moment of 2000, we will ring the bell 33 times here announcing and asking opening up of the 33 heavens for us. So the first, because there is no way to learn how to meditate, but we were sitting more than an hour without knowing how to sit, sitting you know, in group uh, more than an hour is difficult. So I decided, uh, I think within first week, I decided I will get up with the first ring of the bell. So while they take a 33 stroke, I was the first one, we didn't have a water faucet in the monastery, so we, went, we have to go outside and uh, 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 patch the water and then uh, wash my face with the ice cold. It was February, very cold winter time, and they wake me up. That cold water on my face woke me up. So I went to the meditation room, I was the first one out of 200 students. So it was a light is on before meditation. Beginning meditation, they put the light off. So I, had, I just brought the scripture of one Buddhism. I read just on meditation part every single day. It became my habit. So before anybody arrived, I can read all the teachings of how to meditate, the general meaning of meditation and the benefit of meditation. That's really inspired to meditate well. That way I learned. Without personal instruction, you can learn the uh, method of meditation. Just uh, borrowing one of our scripture here and read it before you meditate each day. When we try to understand this uh, samadhi, we need to really practice meditation regularly and be able to settle down your mind 100%. Not planning something I will do after this Dharma talk or Dharma service when you return. Or rehearse anything you need to say to the somebody. Or think about, worry about all those with the anxiety, what, what's going to come in the coming week or what I will do or 
attached to what had happened yesterday, the day before yesterday, and, and even childhood memory comes in and play a big role while you are meditation, while you are meditating. So just to recognize it, catch yourself, aware of it, simply let it go, and come back to your breathing again and again, each breath at the time. Then you will be able to calm your mind and enter this samadhi. The purpose of each city is experiencing this samadhi, this total 100% meditative concentration with your breathing or your, on your dungeon. And second meaning of uh, Iransang, the realm of samadhi means nirvana. Iransang is a realm of nirvana. What does nirvana, when you hear this word, Sanskrit word of nirvana, so you're learning two Sanskrit words today, samadhi and nirvana. So what does nirvana mean to you? Nirvana means overcoming dualism. We have a dualistic thinking all the time, right? Me and you, men and women, heaven and sky black and white, negative and positive, yin and yang. We all think in this dualistic way. This the dualistic thinking is the one causing all the problem in our world. Think about it. If you think I'm right and they are wrong, what do you do? You, you want to correct the wrongness right, of the others. If we think we are the good guys and they are the bad guys, what will we do? We put the, all our energy and power and force to convert the others, the, the bad guys or evil guys, because they are wrong. So we try to do everything to convert them to come to our side. Now think about the, our, our world affair. We are very, very uh, vividly experienced at the UN all the time. All the conflict, all the problems, all the shootings, all killings, all the harming or hurting others comes from this dualistic thinking of I am different than you. And we are, happen to be good guys. We are in the side of good guys. You are happen to be bad guys. Out of our compassion, we want to correct you. So all kind of things happening. Think about even suicide bombers from 9-11. They have that kind of mentality. How can you do that? By hurting others, you, can, you have a guarantee to go to heaven. So it's nirvana means overcoming this, this dualistic thinking, this dualism. What does that mean then? We are, we are overcoming this dualistic thinking of I, my, me, mine, and others. We try to understand the, the tree, not I understand tree. If you are entering samadhi, if you are experiencing nirvana, you are not experiencing the tree, but you become one with the tree. So it's like a tree experience tree. That's a very powerful, very spiritual message and, and uh, experience that we are learning, we are practicing meditation, we are practicing mindfulness to experience this samadhi, to experience this nirvana means that there is a way to overcome dualism. So we can overcome all the conflict, all the anger, all the hatred, all the problems. If you see anyone who is suffering, if you begin to see that person as if you become that person, as if you become one with that person, you begin to understand the cause of their problem and you will have that kind of compassion. You will have that wisdom to help them out. So understanding this is the first sentence of Irvan Sangbao is that we want to experience this nirvana. I'm talking about nirvana in the dualistic things or overcoming dualism. Unless you experience it, it doesn't mean anything. 
I am pointing finger to the real moon to, for you to see nirvana, for you to see the Irwan Sang over there, or Dharmakaya, for you to see that nirvana through your own experience. It is not get it. We cannot get it by uh, word or speech. So in each sitting, we enter nirvana because we are, we are chanting it one is a realm of samadhi beyond all words and speech. So each sitting, the purpose of each sitting is in entering this samadhi and experiencing this nirvana. So all suffering, all suffering of our life, all suffering of our humanity will disappear. That is the compassionate teaching of Buddha, that it is possible for all of us through consistent meditation, consistent practice of mindfulness, it is possible to experience nirvana, it is possible to experience this samadhi. So all the distress, all the suffering, all the dissatisfaction and uh, uneasiness will be gone. So during your day daily practice, daily life, your life itself, is opportunity to practice this one. So meditate as much as possible, practice it as much as possible, and focus your mind. Since Ellen is here, I just wanted this um, carpenter. I am very, from the, my young age, I have a great uh, ability to watch. <laughs> when I watch a carpenter, they drew a straight line, and then after they drew a straight line, they want to cut that line to make a cabinet or to make anything they want. So when they cut the board, they just saw so, so, so along the edge. They didn't look side here or side there. They don't look at the teeth of the soul. They don't look at the anything else. But their entire attention is just to look at the line and the going forward. This is a meditation. So I think Alan will meditate very well. <laughs> because when you, when you make that cabinet and cut a certain shape or a certain size, you draw and the only whole focus is just the line itself. Not look at the third one, not look at anything else. So this is just very similar to training of our mind, that focus your undivided, concentrated, uninterrupted uninter attention on your practice of breathing here. This is, a, in our meditation, is a breathing. So fully aware of the beginning of your breathing, inhalation, middle of it, and end of your inhalation, and then beginning of your exhalation, and middle of your exhalation, and end of exhalation. That way you build samadhi. Just fully aware of it with the undivided, undistracted attention on your breathing, one breath at a time. So when you now chant Iran Sang vow, remember to experience samadhi, nirvana, one-pointedness, overcoming all the dualism. So this is the third week of Iran Sang vow study, and we will continue. I will try to make every teaching of Iran Sang vow in our daily life, daily activities. So I want you to experience at home and bring all the questions here. <laughs>